Hello, my name is Tawanda Carpenter, and I am the Positive Support and Bullying Prevention Coordinator for Gifford County Schools. If you're watching this video, I want to welcome you to Anti-Bullying and Internet Cyberspace Safety Session. Before I start, I want to make you aware of the mission and vision of Gifford County Schools. The mission of Gifford County Schools is Gifford County students will graduate as responsible citizens prepared to succeed in higher education or in the career of their choice. And the vision of Gifford County Schools is transforming learning and life outcomes for all children. So I have a very quick activity. I want you to think back to when you were in high school and think about a time that you witnessed someone being bullied. Can you recall your feelings? And if so, how did you feel? And how are you feeling now thinking about this situation? Take a moment and process this activity. As you continue to process the activity and the questions, I want to share the definition of bullying. Bullying is unwanted aggressive behavior among school age children that involves a real or perceived power imbalance. The behavior is repeated or has the potential to be repeated over time. So let me point out some terms in this definition. The difference in power means that the victim is weaker or is seen as weaker. For example, bullies may try to use physical strength, embarrassing information, or popularity to harm others. Repetition means it happens more than once or that it's probably going to happen again. So earlier, I asked you to think about a time you witnessed someone being bullied. And now I want you to imagine a student sitting at home, in class, or just out eating with their family. And they receive the following messages. You're fat. You're ugly. No one likes you. You're a loser. You have no friends. Think about the messages. And think about how quick the messages can be sent to not just only one person, but to many with just one click. This type of behavior is referred to cyberbullying. Cyberbullying is inappropriate use of electronic communication. Cyberbullying has become a significant new problem in the past decade. The presence of handheld and other devices afford bullies constant access to their prey and their harassment can often be carried out anonymously. So cyberbullying includes sending inappropriate text messages, posting rumors on social media, sharing mean content about someone, sharing embarrassing pictures or videos online, sharing someone else's private information online, making threats against someone online, and also creating fake accounts and posting information to embarrass someone. Certain types of cyberbullying can be illegal. The laws of cyberbullying are different from state to state. So we know since the beginning of time, people have always found it to be very comforting to put other people down, even if the comments they make are mean and harmful. 
This explains why cyberbullying is a real problem in today's society. Overall, 36.5% of people feel they have been cyberbullied in their lifetime and 17.4% have reported it happening at some point in the last 30 days. These numbers are more than double what they were in 2007 and both represent an increase from 2018 to 2019, suggesting we are headed in the wrong direction when it comes to stopping cyber bullying. 87% of young people have seen cyber bullying occurring online. So one may wonder, how does this happen? Through electronic apps, such as Twitter, YouTube, WhatsApp, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. At this point, it should be clear that cyberbullying is a large problem in today's society. But where does cyberbullying occur? To get a little bit deeper into the problems cyberbullying causes, we took a look at the following data provided by Ditch the Label, one of the world's leading anti-bullying organization. They asked students to indicate on what social media platforms they had experienced cyberbullying. And here are the results. Twitter, 9%. YouTube, 10%. WhatsApp, 12%. Snapchat, 31%. Facebook, 37%. Instagram, 42%. So here are some more cyberbullying statistics to consider. Over half of students who identify as being LGBTQ have experienced cyberbullying at some point according to StopBullying.gov. And girls are more likely to be victims of cyberbullying than boys. Overall, around 36% of girls have reported being cyberbullied as compared to 26% of boys, according to Pew Research Center. And last, 83% of those who have been cyberbullied have also been bullied in person, and 69% of those who admitted to bullying online have also admitted to in person bullying. So we know that bullying is a serious problem that causes harm. And it doesn't just hurt the person who has been bullied. It can also be harmful for the bullies and for any kids who witness the bullying. Kids who are bullied can have problems at school and with their mental and physical health. They're at risk for depression, anxiety, and low self-esteem. These problems sometimes last into adulthood. To help you get a better idea about some of the impact cyberbullying can have on mental health, consider the following findings from the Ditch the Label study. In this survey, students who have been cyberbullied were asked to identify what issues they felt occurred because of their experience with cyberbullying. The results were 9% began abusing alcohol and of drugs. 14% developed an eating disorder. 20% started skipping class. 24% stopped using social media altogether. 25% engaged 
in self-harm. 26% deleted their social media profiles. 26% had suicidal thoughts. 37% developed depression. And 41% developed social anxiety. Next, I want to make you aware of 15 apps uh, that all parents should be aware. However, there are two that I want to bring to your attention, TikTok and the calculator app. TikTok is mostly used by kids to make short videos. Due to the recent pandemic, this app has seen an increase in cyberbullying due to body shaming and leaving mean messages on the kids. Uh, TikTok videos. The calculator app is a secret app that is used to hide browser history, photos, videos, and files. I have added the link for you to view um, the videos discussing the 15 apps at the end of this session. Next, I want to do also another quick activity. This activity is called Internet Acronyms and Text Terms. I want you to take about maybe one to two minutes and see how many terms that you can come up with. At your leisure, please go back and see how many you guessed correctly. The answers are here on slide 14. Next, I want to inform you on how to report bullying to Gifford County Schools. First, go to gcsnc.com, which is our Gifford County School homepage. Click on Departments, click on Student Support, and please scroll to the bottom right corner. You can click on Elementary, Middle, or High School, or Specialty School. Click on the form and download a copy, or you can complete an electronic report. As I mentioned earlier, here's the link for the 15 apps that parents should know about and additional resources at stopbullying.gov and pacer.org. Once again, my name is Tawanda Carpenter. I am the Positive Support and Bullying Prevention Coordinator and if you need to contact me, my number is 336-370-2303 or feel free to send me an email at carpent at gcsnc.com. Thank you and have a great day.